for you. We are live again. It's Friday as I make this. That's exciting. It's got to be exciting for the weekend. Uh, hopefully it is. Look, when you when things are going bad in life, uh, nothing is exciting. So I have love and compassion to everyone out there who may be having a bad day. But let's stay positive. Why? Because being negative is only going to make it worse. So as best you can, stay positive, keep pushing forward, and uh, try to be thankful. And keep positive people around you. Don't allow any body who is negative to stay in your circle uh especially your inner circle friends family uh whoever uh even if there's uh, somebody negative uh you know when you're in a store i mean just get away from them you know avoid drama avoid negativity uh life's hard enough don't add to it uh with negative people meadow tales on a live check-in hey meadow how are you beautiful uh how is your day going what are you doing this weekend are you doing anything magical do you celebrate uh meadow medals from the philippines meadow do you celebrate mother's day in the philippines better video tube say sam tom what's going on brother how are you yolanda yolanda pump the music up go for that walk we love you yolanda hope you had a good day yolanda yes we're approaching uh mother's day um on uh this sunday uh, as i make this uh video don't forget uh, if you've been blessed with a good mother i have uh no mother is perfect remember that too uh, and some people haven't been blessed with a good mother. Some, you know, so it's it's all relative. But uh, for me, I have, and so I'll definitely try to spend time with my mom this weekend. Uh, Meadow says yes, we do. That's good. Meadow smiling, good. It's good to smile. Hey, look, how do you combat negativity? I mean, fake a smile if you have to, uh, as long as you're not faking it to be political, like to try to like swindle people. But if you're just smiling because you're trying to fight back, uh, you know, the pain of the world, that's wisdom. Uh, you know, like uh, Pac said, smile through all this BS. Uh, smile through all the bullshit. Uh, you have to. You have to be thankful. Keep pushing forward. And that's what we do. Susanna, good evening to you, Susanna. Loving it. Chris, what's going on, brother? Good evening to you, Chris. Good to see you, man. Peace and love to you. Meadow, my mom is our service leader tomorrow. Well, that's a blessing. Amen. That's great. Meadow Viltubes, good to see you, Sam. Hot today in South Carolina. 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Thank you for that weather uh, update, Tom. It was beautiful today uh, in New Jersey. Now, you know I like it hot, uh, but once in a while, I like a cool day. It was it was in the mi mid-70s with, like, no humidity, nice breeze. I have to admit, I went outside for a couple walks today. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So, you know, it's that time of the year uh, in the U.S. Uh, that uh, in the northern states, the weather is starting to turn. But that being said, uh, tomorrow and the next day after, it's supposed to be back in 57 degrees. So it's still a little finicky. Uh, Jennifer M. Hey, Sammy. A great sunny and hot day in South Carolina. Yes, I like it hot. Sweat is good for you. It's good to sweat. As long as you're not out there digging a ditch. And I did that. I uh, worked at a construction site in the beginning of my career. And for a couple summers, I worked in ditches. Uh, laying pipe. Uh, not that type of pipe. The real pipe. Come on. And uh, laying pipe and uh, working in construction. And uh, winters and summers. Uh, and it was all part of... Uh, you know, paying your dues. Meadow, proud of her. Yes. Again, if you've been blessed with a good mom, uh, you know, be proud of her. Now, you don't need to necessarily be with her on Mother's Day in one sense of speaking. I mean, it can be a commercial like everything else Mother's Day. But uh, if you are able to be with them, then uh, be with them. But stay flexible. Stay flexible. Uh, don't feel obligated to have to see your mother and have to do this. Uh, and your mother shouldn't obligate you. Uh, why is it a blessing at this point together with my mother or any loved one out of free will, not out of obligation. And we are not tied down. We are not, we're not burdened and enslaved to a system of today is mother's day. We have to go out to, we have to go out to lunch. We have to go out to dinner. We have to go to a restaurant. You know, I have to give a card. I have to give a, a balloon. I have to give this. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. There's a whole system of life that does not keep you free. It does not keep the people free. There's many systems, okay? There's a, a financial system, uh, whether it's capitalism or anything else. There's a religious system, uh, okay? Uh, why? When did Jesus get the most pissed when the religious system was uh, using money in their system, Okay. Uh, there's a healthcare system. Um, there's a several different systems that are embedded in society that are not meant to keep people free. 
Systems come with introductory offers. The first one free. Okay. Oh, come in free. Uh, do this. It's They want to suck you in with a low introductory, either a price or a, a fake greeting in order to get their claws in you so that you get caught in their system. Have you ever noticed that when you go to a store and you buy something, there's many cash registers, whether they're self-checkout or they have a cashier, but when you go to return something, there's only one or two cash registers. Why? Companies want to make it harder to return something than it is to buy something. Okay. Why do companies offer an introductory read? Because they want you to get caught in their ecosystem. Okay, They want you to start out with them, and then eventually they'll add charges and fees up, and it's hard to break away from that system and get free. Why? Because people are creatures of habit. Humans are creatures of habit. So once they're used to having something, even if they don't like it, even if the price goes up, it's hard to break it. It's hard to get free. People come to church broken. They meet nice people that are friendly, that are overall positive. Then before you know it, the pastor's saying you have to uh, be, you know, eventually find a home church. And then he's, you know, then they're saying that, you know, Membership comes with benefits. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're caught in that system. And it's hard to get out of a church. Once you get established in a church and your kids are baptized there and you go through this, it's very hard to say, look, I'm not going here anymore. But you need to do that. It's very hard that your whole life as a child, you are brainwashed with advertisement. Whether it's advertisement for Fruit Loops, um, Frosted Flakes, you see cartoon characters associating themselves with sugary cereal. Sugary cereal. Back in the day, you saw the camel. Uh, it was like um, it was a camel uh, animation that used to endorse um, cigarettes. You're brainwashed to buy something, to nag your parents that you want a certain sneaker, that you want a certain thing, so that you can immediately get caught into that consumerism trap. Then, your whole time in school, you're taught you need a college education. You have to do this. Then you kind of got college education, maybe. Maybe you're one of the few. And I think most people, it's a little bit tough. And then you get the, then you have the college loan debt. Then you're caught in the system then you get out of college then you want to have a family then you start a family then you get really behind on the bills then of course you want the american dream you buy a house you buy a car you're caught in the system you can't change jobs it's too hard to get out the systems of life whether it's consumerism whether it's um religion whether it's A, something as simple as a holiday, which ties into consumerism. God forbid if you don't see your parents or your mother on Mother's Day. Now, I plan to. But if I had other plans or if I needed to do something else, at this point in our life, in a mature place, there would be no problem to not see her. Now, many people only see their parents on Mother's Day. Is that really? I mean, that's like a scam almost. A day should not determine... And you should, you, you should not be in bondage to a day. You know, there's a scripture that says, you know, Jesus set you free from the law. Why are you, why, don't get caught back up into the law. Don't get back caught up into it. You can leave a church anytime you want with no, with no justification. Just, you know what? I don't want to be here anymore. You can stop a cable service, a Netflix service, any service that is charging you monthly, you can cut it off at any time. You can get out of the system, but it's going to take you, a, it's going to take you out of the mindset that you've been brainwashed into, to not be caught into a society programming. We're programmed to get caught in this system so that we have to work jobs that don't we don't like. So that we have to visit family members we don't like. Put too much on our plate on a holiday weekend so we stress ourselves out. Then we go back to work on Monday. We haven't recharged our batteries. And we resent everything. And we're not living a fulfilled life. And they love it. All, you know, 
all the wheels that turn the system, whether it be big banks, whether it be big churches, whether it be big super Walmarts. I'm not against any of them. I'm not one of these people that say, I want the downfall of systems. I want the downfall of society. I'm not one of these people that is like a prepper that says, oh, get your canned goods and your, uh, you know, all the armed, armed weapons you can get. I'm not one of those people. But I have learned through minimalism, the deprogramming of the mind, that the systems in society are meant to embed in your mindset so that you get caught in these consumer traps, these religious traps, these holiday traps, and that you don't live a free life. You live a life based on how society programs you, and it plays off your fears, it plays off your insecurities, It plays off your human nature to be a creature of habit. Why do companies want people's data? In the technology era, that's the big thing now that all companies want your data. Why do they want your data? So they can study your habits. Why do they want to know your habits? They want to know your habits so that they can form a system around your habits because they know habits are hard to break. You know, what? why did cigarettes, why are they engineered? Why are they sold? Because they're very addictive. And when you're caught in that ecosystem. You know, anything that doesn't allow you to be free is dangerous to you. A relationship, financial obligation, society, holiday, Anything that guilt trips you is not good for you. That's bondage. Any pastor who is worth his weight in salt or whatever the hell you want to say it, if his whole message is for you to come back to church week after week after week and not eventually heal and go out in the world and not have to go to church every week, then that pastor just wants your 10%. He wants you to be caught in that system. Where you never change your life. You never start to do the work of your life. All you do is you want to come to church every Sunday for the temporary high, give a little bit, act like you're nice, and then go back right to the vicious cycle. To get out of the system, you have to have a different mindset than almost everyone in society. People laugh sometimes when I say, oh, most people are miserable. And I don't say that as judgment. Because I see how easy it is to get caught in the cycle. But that this is the mindset you have to understand if you're going to do something different. That you're going to be the oddball. You're going to be the one not in the system. And again, not one of those people. I'm not one of those people that say, oh, bring down the system. No, because some systems are good. Some part of the system is right. You need things. I mean, you need structure, right? So I'm not, you know, preaching anarchy. I don't believe in that. I'm thankful for the different systems that have helped society grow and become modernized. But again, if you feel like you have to stretch yourself too thin, pick up your mother, 8 o'clock in the morning, go to church with her, go to Olive Garden. It's going to be packed on Sunday in every restaurant. And there's going to be traffic. There's going to be aggravation. Why do people do it? It's an obligation. Why is... I just got out of Walmart. I had to return something. Why is the return lane, the return aisle longer than the purchase aisle. They want to make it harder to return things. They want you to say, fuck, it's not worth it. Stores are designed just like casinos. Casinos are a system. Casinos don't have clocks. Casinos are architectured like a maze to keep you trapped. Bells and whistles go off, neon lights, all this plays to your emotions. It's a system. It's not by accident. You know how many millions and billions of dollars goes into designing things solely to get you entrapped in the system? A lot. Because there's a lot of money to be made. So, my closing thoughts on my structure topic tonight is always remember to think for yourself and not think as if the and not think the way the system taught you 
Because there are some good things in the systems, but the system is flawed. And the system will take your freedom if you're not conscious of it. Any system, religious system, consumerism system, healthcare system, self-care is the new healthcare. Okay? Once you get caught, if you've ever been to the uh, doctor, you go to the doctor's office, make an appointment two weeks in advance, get charged an outrageous rate, your insurance never goes down health care, you will wait at least an extra half hour at a doctor's appointment you made two weeks ago. At least a half hour. And then you got to sign, then when you finally, they call you to the front of the line, you got to sign more paperwork, you're going to be there now for 45 minutes before you even see anyone Close to being qualified to look at you from a healthcare perspective. Why? It's a system. It's a system to get the sheep, hurdle them. Let's overbook our doctor office. Let's book as many people as we can in the office. Charge the healthcare providers, and then you know we'll just cycle through. Most of the time, you're in a doctor's office. You spend with the secretary and the nurse. Fraction of that time you spend with the doctor. Fraction. It's a system. Look, sometimes you have to go see the doctor. Sometimes you have to get caught in that system. And some of that system, look, you can get sometimes life-treating medicine. So again, the system is not totally corrupt. But what I'm trying to tell you is you have to be very conscious of not getting caught in that system. How do you avoid the healthcare system? <laughs> Take care of yourself. You think a doctor that just made you wait an hour in his waiting room cares more about your health than you? Not, not really. He cares that you have the adequate health care to provide the charge that he's going to bill your uh, insurance company. That's right. He's not evil or she's not evil. Look, they're just doing their job like everyone else. But this is how you have to view life. This is how I view life. Especially now as an adult, especially as a, a mature adult, you're going to look at life differently as you, as you grow and you evolve. But now, middle age, you know, looking at life, I'm very conscious not to just accept things because this is the way the system is. Don't, again, I don't want to preach any type of like anarchy or because that's not wisdom. That doesn't help society. But I'm just preaching self thought and I'm giving you the okay to don't, to not allow yourself to be burdened down with demands from any system that wants to just basically tax you. All right. That being said, live comment time. Uh,. Jennifer M, I read that. Meadow said she's proud of her mom. I'm not mad at that. Better video too. Hey, Chris. Hey, all. The SI Project. Philly in the house. SI, what's up, brother? Chris, BBT. Yes, summer's here. Good to see you, brother. BBT. Hello. Good to see you. Your your job going well, Chris? The SI Project. Philly in the house again. I'm not mad at that. Pat. Hey, Sam. My comp is not working. Your, her computer is not working well. So I'm having to do with a screen on the comp. That's okay. Good to see you, uh, Pat. From uh, California, Chris, better video tubes. It's a job. Uh, thanks for asking. My route has me traveling through your neck of the woods. South Carolina's in the building. BBT, that's cool. BBT, route job, that's good. What's that now? A delivery job, um, Chris? Like a uh, trucking or something like that? Better video tubes. I don't visit my mother often because Delta Airlines won't wait in the yard while I run in. <laughs> Sailor John, hello, Sam. What's up, brother? Hope you had a great day. Your overall is pretty positive. Forward we go. That's right. Palm tree emoji. Yes. September coal sold car and borrowing a bike for a couple weeks prior to leaving. Only bill left is a Verizon. A small payment Small payment for boat insurance. Yes. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm not going backwards to getting caught in that whole, no matter what, you need money, you got bills, but the whole system of, of house ownership to me, I mean... Uh, I mean, you know, look, I, I can't say that for everyone because, look, some people want families. They have to get static. And, you know, if you're going to stay in one area for more than 10 years, I, I could certainly understand you want to buy versus rent. But uh, live below your means, man. Figure that out some way. Sound John, never coming back. You already know what that is. Susanna G, exit the Matrix. Yes. the ma Good job, Susanna. The Matrix was a movie. Uh, where people were basically, that's what it's about, people caught in the system of society. And the only way to get out of that system is to become self-aware, conscious, and to take a step back and look at your life. This is what we're talking about here tonight. Look at your life. Have you just accumulated things because this is what you were taught? 
Have you just followed a certain pattern because this is part of the system? Do you just go to church on Sunday because it's part of the system? Do you just pick up your mother and then take her to Olive Garden because it's part of the system? Is there anything wrong with that necessarily? No, but if you're not free, it's not good. Why? You have to remember to keep your spirit free. Why? Because when your spirit is not free, you die. And when you die, you don't live the life you're supposed to live. Scripture says that wherever there is freedom, there is the spirit of the Lord. So wherever there's not freedom, definitely God ain't there. God lives inside you. Uh, that's important. Uh, Yolanda, free. Almost always cost you something. Yes, it's going to cost you everything that you spent your life accumulating. It's going to cost you relationships. It's going to cost you the pain of changing your mind. The pain of thinking different. The pain of having to now be for someone who was... That's why the stubborn suffer. The stubborn suffer. Why? Because they won't change their mind. The stubborn, even if they see they're in a system that's not healthy for them, they will not change their mind. Why? They're too rigid. They're too prideful to say, you know what? This isn't the way. I got to figure out something else. No one suffers like the stubborn. No one. And no one can help them. Why? Self-inflicted wounds. Got to be very careful. Uh, quiet in here tonight. Chris, Sound John, Godspeed, brother. Bob the Builder. Well said, brother. Bob, good to see you, brother. Better be in tubes. I told my psychiatrist just today that everybody hated me. He told me that's impossible because I haven't met everybody yet. Ah, BBT. Good job, BBT. Way to laugh, brother. Patrick, what's up, brother? Renaissance 2.0 and debunking money are great explanations of the scam that is the money system. Yes, I mean, the money system, I mean, printed money that does grow on trees. Okay, the Federal Reserve uh, prints money. Okay, it's not... Every dollar in the system is not backed up by a gold bar somewhere in a bank. But the truth is that is a little bit better than every dollar being backed up by a gold bar. Why? The economy would never grow if it wasn't based on a debt printing money Federal Reserve system. Okay, If we went and we only were on the barter system, we would live... Everyone would still be farmers. We would still be housed on the prairie. You wouldn't have modern conveniences, technology, advancements. So again, some of the system is not told. I mean, it's the best. Some of the system is not totally corrupt. You can look at third world countries and you can see they don't print. There's some of them that don't print money that they go on basically the barter system. And it's, you know, it's not, they don't have modern amenities. They don't have society. There's a couple of kings and queens. There's a couple rich oil people. They run the whole thing and that's it. And I mean, what America used to really make its staple on, it had a middle class. You know, most other countries don't. They have a few very rich and everybody else very poor. Now, it has been said that statistically the middle class has been shrinking uh, in America over the course of the past 20, 30 years. So that's a fair argument, too. But I don't believe we want to go back to the barter system. Uh, I believe you know, we would not evolve as a society. But again, there's never going to be a perfect system. So let me let, let's not try to figure out a way where there's, there's nothing's going to be perfect. It can be better. But the main thing you have to do, don't get caught in that dark hole of trying to figure that out. The main thing you need to do is just be conscious of not getting caught in the system. You know, when you, when I started to really, you understand minimalism and adapt my life to that, you know, go, when I walk around now in Target or Walmart, I see everyone caught in that system, you know, buying things for their house, buying clothes and and an endless thing. I mean, look, you have to buy some of those things, but it, they just, I could tell like it's its just, they're doing it almost without thought, like I was. Mm. And so you just gotta be careful uh, because eventually, you know, it, it just leads to where your spirit isn't free. Bob the Builder, just started watching you. Great stuff, keep it up, Bob. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, Bob, thank you. Susan, hello, Sam, hello to you. Had to come back for another visit. Love the ranch. Thank you, brother, I, I mean, brother. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. I appreciate that. Chris, love to you. Uh, Sam, I have been hearing that the government frowns on the nomadic lifestyle. If you don't have a physical address, they have trouble tracking you. Also, they can't collect your property tax. Well, one is if you rent, you don't you don't pay property tax, okay? So no matter where you reside, as long as you pay your federal and if you your state has income tax, uh, there should be no issue. Now, look, eventually may they cause that an issue, fine. But yeah, people who rent, you know, they don't pay property tax, you know, so... You know, you you know, 
there's whole states that love tourism. The thing is, I mean, you have to have somewhat of structure. I mean, there has to be some type of laws, but the thing is always laws versus freedom, freedom versus laws. I mean, hopefully it never gets out of skew, but certainly, um, you know, certainly, yeah, I mean, if everyone, you know, no one bought a house, I mean, the economy would be completely different. But the reality is, look, again, 1% or less of society is living in their car. Okay, so right now there's approximately 325 million people in the USA. Okay, so less than one percent, less than one percent. I don't. I do not think three million or more people are living in their car. I don't. Uh, so it's it's less than one percent of society living fully nomadic, not weekend campers, not you know I have a house and I camp occasionally for a couple months. I mean fully nomadic, but. I pay my taxes in my uh, paycheck. I file for taxes every year. I pay everything. I'm everything's legit. So again, it's just that you have to, you know, pay your taxes, you know, and uh, you know, do things legally. Uh, certainly, can they eventually pass law? I mean, look, they passed laws in California that you couldn't RV long term uh, in certain towns, uh, as far as like parking on the street. But people abused it. You know, people sit, you know, parked on the side of a street for just weeks on end and never left. Uh, so. You know, again, laws usually come with abuse. There's usually an overreaction. Uh, it's not easy. Look, the, but the system's never going to be perfect. I mean, so, again, I'm not trying to say, look, go against the system. I, I don't think it's wisdom to be totally combative uh, unless there's a severe injustice. Then, you know, it is what it is. But I'm just trying to plant a seed of us being conscious of not getting caught into a any system. Again, consumerism house trap, boat trap, uh, Walmart trap, Mother's Day trap, anything that, you know, is just, you know, you do it out of, because that's the way it's always been done. You just have to be conscious of, and there's nothing wrong with just, you may want to do it. You may want to do everything that's always been done, you know, but I'm just saying it's okay if you don't, you know, that's all. Uh, Tony Williams, off topic. That's all right. I mean, this is a free flow. I just, I just pick a structured topic so that the conversation has some direction so that each night I can just focus my mind on something I want to speak on specifically. And then it's just a free flow. Like whatever you guys want to talk about, it's all good. Off topic. But would you ever consider living in a cargo van? Well, not a full cargo van. I owned a cargo van when I had my own electrical contracting business. I had a Ford E250 van. Uh, I don't like how they drive. Uh, feel like I'm going to lay sheetrock. I don't want to feel like I'm driving to go lay sheetrock. I want to have my sunroof down, windows down, listen to Sade on the east coast of Florida. That's what I want. And I don't get that in a cargo van. So if anything, I would get maybe a mini cargo van, like a Ford Transit Connect or a Dodge Pro Master, something like that. There's a couple people that live at those. Uh, uh, or like a Nissan NV200, something like that. Uh, but I'm not really... I want, I want to have a sunroof and I want to be able to put all my windows down. So we'll see. I'm not fully sold on that yet, but not a big cargo van. Gilbert, Sam, happy Mother's Day. Laugh out loud. I got you, brother. Good to see you, Gilbert. M93. Hello, Sam. Hope all is well. Yeah, good good, good to see you, Am. Hope all is well with you also. Yeah. And happy Mother's Day to you. Let me see how we all say it. I mean, it's good to celebrate Mother's Day. The same thing with um, Valentine's Day, right? What is that? It's just really another way for people to spend money. Black Friday, another way for people to spend money. Um, I think in China, isn't there a singles day? Uh that's a big revenue driver too. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with it either. I mean, again, it's like I'm not trying to be unskewed here because I think it's good to take a day out of the year to remember certain holidays and to, uh, you know, celebrate things and to enjoy them. So I'm not against that. Like, you know, it's just just be conscious of I, I spent years of my life feeling obligated to be at a... Uh, you know, at a restaurant on Mother's Day because that's what you do. Feel obligated to be with uh, family members uh, at Christmas, at Father's Day, because that's what you do. Uh, you know, look, it's all bullshit. Uh, every relationship that's really healthy, there's a lot of freedom. Uh, every relationship that's controlling, there's no freedom. Oh, big difference. Big difference. And uh, when you're free financially, when you're free obligation-wise, when you're free, when you can say, look, I'm not fucking coming to church tomorrow and I don't have to give an excuse. Oh, you know how many people, I mean, I know, you know, in the church game, people have to figure out an excuse to give the pastor because, you know, it's like if they don't show up, it's like, uh, you know, it's a big deal. And that's not freedom. You know, so, you know, I know uh, Chris asked, you know, governments don't like when you don't um, necessarily, you know, pay property tax or whatever. But, 
everything's a tax, right? I mean, if you get part of, if you're part of a church and you're giving a certain amount each week, if you don't show up, their budget is skewed, right? Because how how do townships pay for uh, school systems and teachers, uh, property tax? Okay, so if uh, you know, you know how do churches, you know, <laughs> every thing is based on budgets. Budgets are determined by people's routines and habits. And then, you know, people form them around that. But there's this, just be conscious of, of the whole traps out there. A lot of traps, a lot of traps. Um, Chris, I, oh boy, did I miss something? Uh, Gilbert said, happy Mother's Day to all. Nod to their mothers. Good evening. Yes. Love and respect to the mothers. Chris, I work as a carrier for a dental lab. Forward, all caps. There you go, brother. That's what I like to hear. Well, the healthcare industry is booming. Uh, bottom line, uh, booming. Uh, now, we have an older population here in America. The baby boomers are in retirement age. The baby boomers were a period in time where many babies were born in this country during a boom period. Okay, uh, I don't know what it is. I think from like 40... 1940s to the 1960s, something in like that 20-year range were considered the baby boomers. Now they're all old in retirement and close to the life expectancy age. So healthcare is booming. Uh, the birth rates have slowed um, because you know people have not no longer bought into the system that as soon as you get out of high school uh, and you know you get married by the age of 25. You know, 50 years ago that was the system. Okay. You get out of high school, you either go in the army, uh, very few people went to college, and you get a job, and by 25, you're married, and then you usually got about one kid following. And that's why divorce rates got so high. It was a system. It wasn't freedom. You know, now it's a system, I mean, again, just to go to college. You know, colleges are for-profit institutions, most of them, most of them. So they love accepting applicants. Why? charge more i mean you know it's a tuition is a budget it's like it's a system you know you get you know you get accepted in the college and say all right here's thirty thousand dollars we got more in our budget because we accepted this person let's build more dorms let's build more this and that uh again i'm not against higher learning i'm not against college i'm just saying the system now is different okay so 50 years ago the system you had to be very careful not to get caught in was all right it's part of the system is after you get out of high school, you either go in the army or you go, um, you know, you get married by 25. And what did we find out? We found out when the shit really hit the fan and we had the draft here in America, uh, the richest and uh, most well-off people dodged the army. Uh, all the poor people served in the front lines and, um, you know, they got statues, or, you know, they got walls built to them, but. The people who dodged the draft, you know, are now running the world. <laughs> That's how it goes. That's the system. You know, they, they honor the military now, but they're the same ones that didn't want to join the military. So that's, that's the same. You got to be very careful. And very careful. And um, there's a lot of systems out there, guys. got to be very careful. That's all I can say. Uh, Gilbert, hard room tonight. Not loving my comedy, Gil, Gil, uh, Tom. You got to always remember as, as uh, if you're giving jokes or you're doing anything, you know, you just do it for you. Uh, sometimes, you know, I feel that way too. Like I'm sharing something that's really important to me and some people it doesn't touch them. That's okay. Whatever you do in life, be true to the, be true to thyself. Okay. And the seed is planted and you are self-expressing for you. Don't worry about the reaction of the crowd. Uh, don't worry about the reaction of the crowd. Anytime you do any public speaking, just go forward. Be you. Gilbert, your comedy is tops, BBT. BBT, thank you. It's Angie, thanks, Gilbert. Rattling it down. Got it. Rattling it at. Oh, I'm sorry, we lost that comment a second. Says, guy at work I used to date, he's trying to push me out of my job. Twice went to management and made me sound bad. I'm a hard worker. This is really affecting my head. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's tough when you, uh, you know, date where you work. Um, yeah, I don't have any answer for that. I mean, you know, you know the situation better than me. I avoid drama and I have to realize too, I'm only hearing one side of the story. I had an Asian MILF that tried to get me like that. She kept telling me how bad her boyfriend was, but I kept telling her, look, I'm only hearing one side of the story. So I have to hear your side of the story. I have to hear their side of the story. Then I have to realize the truth probably is somewhere in the middle. Okay. That's what I've learned in life. So that being said, 
Uh, if you're not happy where you're at, start applying to other jobs. Uh, and if you're happy where you're at and you feel like you're getting abused, then I mean, you know, you got to document, you got to keep, you know, escalating. But I don't know. I'm not going to try to pick sides on that. I, I avoid picking sides when I only hear one side of the story, uh, because I've learned enough in life that every one side of the story is very skewed towards favoring them. Very few people, uh, give the complete story. Very few. Uh, if any, if any, you gotta be very careful, but I love you and I appreciate you. Milano, Sabay, Milano, what's going on, brother? Keep a hat down there in Miami. I shall be down there very soon. Selling John, Chris, thumbs up, forward, Pat. Nah, government issued non-debt money is better. Well, I disagree. Uh, then we would be in horse and carriage. Uh, you know, the only, you know, look, all publicly traded, I mean, very few companies make net profit. Uh, if you had to make net profit, you would never have, uh, we wouldn't be in a developed land. Uh, you'd still be uh, milking cows on a ranch. Uh, in my, in how I view things, but I understand what you're saying. Also all free money banking with open competition. Oh, there's no such thing as open competition. I mean, everyone tilts the scale in their ways. I mean, everyone has different people lobbying for them and, uh, but that's a dark hole. You, you're never going to figure that out. Uh, Pat, but I agree. Gold standard is problematic. Yeah. I mean, everything has given, there's no perfect system. Uh, I, look overall, I th even though capitalism, I think needs reform. Uh, cause I think it's a little bit too skewed. Uh, it's the, one of the best systems out there. I mean, I really haven't seen a better system. Um, but I don't want to start to mind fuck that. What type of system is best at this point? Cause there's no benefit in this chat room to do that. Uh, all I can say is just be conscious of the system. Okay. Because you have the freedom to choose to not enter it. Okay. No one forces you to, over purchase to overeat to overspend to become over religious these are your choices but what what the system does do is play off your weakness okay and learn your habits and then they catch you in a, in their ecosystem so because look i mean just like fishermen out there i mean i know people who love to fish and they hate the system but what's fishing fishing is the system okay fishing is you get some bait you put it on a hook, you throw it out in the water, and you want to catch as many fish as possible. Systems are the same way. Uh, you know, so do you blame the fish? I mean, you, know, you got to be careful. You just got to be careful what you go to bite because it may have a hook on the end of it. You know what I'm saying? Be very careful. <laughs> uh, Pat. Oh, I read that. Everybody do. Chris, those carriers have a reputation of having about a half dozen babies out there. All those lonely receptionists in the tiny little towns of Oh Chris walks. Oh wait, watch Chris. I lost you on that one. Better video tubes. Just cutting up, Chris. Good job to make contracts in the forward. Okay. Yep. At the end of the day, end up forward is what BVT is telling you. Don't get caught in the traps of that business. I understand that. Chris, they can't teach my rugged handsomeness and charm in school. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. It's good to laugh, man. I mean, you know, look, school teaches some good things, too. I mean, look, thank God for, uh, you know, that we have you know, live in a developed land in the U.S. where you do have a level of education. Again, I'm not anti-education. What I am anti is every 20 people sit in a class. One teacher teaches off an answer key that she does, she wouldn't even know that answer key if she, or he wouldn't even know that answer key if they didn't just read it. They're thinking about their summer break. They're not even thinking about their lesson. You got kids sitting in a classroom for an hour, and most people have the attention span, including me. All of us humans have the attention span of a goldfish, eight seconds or less. And so, you know, to expect people to stay in one classroom for an hour, take the same standardized test, give the same answers, and that's, you know, it could be very skewed. Um, I mean, but I have seen a boom in homeschooling. I think that may be a solution. Um, but, you know, when there's homeschooling, there's one parent that's not going to make income. Uh, and in today's society, I mean, it's very hard to make it off one income. The system has now been caught in that trap. I mean, uh, so, but it, it wasn't good either, though, when, when, when uh, you know, women didn't have the opportunity to work and they were automatically designated to um, be a solely like a caretaker and a housekeeper and, and, a, and a homeschooler type mindset because... That's why there was a lot of marriages that were unhealthy for years because women had no options to go out there and earn for themselves 50 years ago to the same level or similar level as men. So thank God that has changed uh, because that doesn't lead to a healthy environment. Many marriages. Uh, 
I saw uh, when I was growing up in my friend's house, and even in my house for a while, that people wouldn't leave an unhealthy relationship because they were controlled by the money. Uh, that's not good. Medivere tubes. I hear you, son. Uh, Chris. John, John. Supposed to rain this weekend. Yeah, I heard that. NJ sucks. What are you doing? Do you have to work? Just wondering. Uh, tomorrow's the last day I should have to work on the weekends. Um, Sunday, I will be spending time with my mother. Uh, out of choice. Out of choice. And um, that's all. Uh, I have to, you know, my schedule now shifted more to the weekdays because uh, I have to set things up and collect some data and things like that. Uh, but I don't have any special plans. Uh, I'll just be outside. Hopefully it won't be raining too much walking, uh, taking care of myself. Not much, not much magical stuff, but I'll be thankful and I'll make the most of it. Repeat. What's up, Sammy? Uh, wh what up, Sammy? Uh, title is true. Thank you, brother. Good to see you. Repeat. Janice. Hey, Janice. I feel like marriage is freedom. There's no doubt. No date to wait to be asked out. You live together. You are family. You know, they are coming home. You know you are coming home to the same house. So you can do what you have to do or want to do. I just saw an ice cream truck for sale in my town, $5,000. I wonder if I could live in that. Well, a couple things. One is I feel freedom is the, I feel marriage is the opposite of freedom. But I understand what you're saying. I mean, you make a good point also that when you're married, it takes the pressure off of everything else. You just know someone's there. But, well, it, well again, if you wanted to, companionship. I don't want that. Uh, so, uh, but I, to me, I, when I think of marriage, I, I think of the opposite of freedom. Well, for some people, again, I, some people are not good being alone. So it's relative to who you are and what your personality is. With well, regards to the ice cream truck, yes, you could, I mean, you can live out of a Jeep Renegade. That's what I do. You can live out of anything if you want to. Uh, but definitely an ice cream truck. The problem with that is the fuel efficiency would be horrible. The maintenance would be horrible. Uh, the stealthness would be horrible. To me, you would lose your greatest asset as a nomad. Sam, what is your greatest asset as a nomad? Flexibility. Flexibility is your greatest asset as a nomad. You know, if the job market dries up in your state, guess what you can do? You can go to the next state. Uh, if you, you know, don't like the area you're in, you want to change scenery, better for your mental health, your creativity, change state. Um, weather is bad in your area, change state. Mental freedom, uh, less you have to take care of, the more flexible you are. It's, it, flexibility is an asset I'm not willing to give up. That's why I'll continue to live out of my car for the foreseeable future. I love flexibility. Uh, I hate being tied down. I um, love the freedom of it. Gray, give a thumbs up for my dude, Nomad. Always keeping it real. Thank you, Gray. I appreciate that. Love and respect to you also, brother. Chris, I'm not discouraging anyone from taking their mother out to eat this Sunday. But try to celebrate another day. I agree with that. I worked in F plus B for years, and you may get below average service because it's so busy. Busy. I took Chris. Well said. I totally agree with that. Uh, now again, look. If you do what you want, always. But yeah, I mean, Sunday's going to be a complete disaster. Uh, everyone's going to be taking their mother out to eat. Uh, everyone's going to be buying flowers. Everyone's going to be buying things, and that's nice. I mean, I believe in honoring and celebrating your mother. But I, I would say do it a different day, man. Or stay home, uh, you know, have like a little uh, picnic in your backyard or something like that. or Just a disaster. And don't wait till Sunday to go to the supermarket. Oh, it's going to be a disaster. My opinion. Better be tubes. I hear you, Chris. I'm not bragging, but I have a heart for food service people and always try to tip very good and pay compliments. Don't eat out as much as I used to, but respect to F and B people. I don't know what F and B people mean, but I can tell you this. Did I used to tip good? Ah, well, if the girl was hot, I don't, if the girl was hot. Uh, I, what was I? Probably about 15%, 15 tipper, about 15% of the check I would tip on average. Uh, that was probably what I tip, but I don't eat out anymore at all. Really? So Chris, BBT, if you don't tip, they won't strip. Well, I would definitely spend a lot of money in the strip club. A lot of money there. Better be a tubes. That's what I'm talking about. Better be the tubes. Gilbert, you still here? Gilbert, yes I am. Better be the tubes. Chris, not tonight. It's hot tonight, Gilbert. Gilbert, you got some comp there. Gilbert, I think you're both funny. Scott, Scott Beeman, what's up, Sam? What's going on here, Scott? Not me. Uh, BBQ at home. Oh, yeah, barbecue at home. Yeah, I mean, now with the weather nice, everybody got the outside uh, furniture out there. 
and that barbecue at home be good. Now, you know me, I believe in that plant-based diet. Now, there's some vegetarian meat out there. Uh, go to the supermarket in the tofu aisle. There's some vegetarian meat. Don't be afraid to uh, barbecue that. Uh, but I know a lot of people like that. I used to love barbecue. Sam John, amen with my mom. Hate to sound like some old guy, but I miss my mom. Now, I ain't old. And, my, and the wife, my mom. What the F? So now I live with urgency. Well, I agree with that. Good comment, brother. I mean, look, if you're blessed um, with a good mother... Uh, definitely try to spend time with her whatever day it is. I mean, I always try to make time uh, for my mother throughout the course of my weeks and things like that. I mean, I've been blessed with a good mom. And um, look, out of everything in life, spending time doesn't have to be your mother necessarily. Because again, I know there's people out there that may not have great mothers. But spending time with people you enjoy is important. Not under obligation, though. And in the increments that best suit your mental health, right? So sometimes you can only take people in small doses. And what I've learned in life is I need to take care of myself first, be in a good space, then I go see my mother. Because if I go see my mother and I haven't taken care of myself, I haven't gone to the gym, I didn't go for a walk, I'm not doing it in a certain way. Uh, you know, you go see that person and you're all stressed out mentally and you put up the show, but in your mind, you're burning up and you're trying to rush back to do whatever you need to do for you. Take care of yourself first. The rest will follow. But in video tubes, F equals food and B equals beverage. Thank you, BVT. Thank you, brother. Yeah, man. Don't get caught in the system. You lined up by. Take care, guys. Peace and love.